a rainy night in the Big Apple, and IFBB bodybuilding legend Victor Martinez continues to train for his comeback at the New York Pro, watched over carefully by his trainer, Victor Munoz. In the last episode of NYBB Blue, we witnessed Victor Martinez performing his first pull-up since breaking his arm. Since then, he has made great progress. The nerve damage that affected his arm is being alleviated by constant physical therapy. Despite the fact that it is still somewhat hampering his grip, he seems to be growing with almost superhuman rapidity. Those that declared the veteran bodybuilder washed up may have to eat their words. So he's evolving. Every day he's getting better and better. Leaps and bounds. Last week, bro, it was like a half a half. Now he's like, ah, ah, ah. Next week, I, I know what I have. And right now, everybody has squashed them all. You know, hey, can make come back, make this done, and all that stuff. You know what? I always say, he's done what he says he's done. And me, I'm just the tool that's going to give him everything he needs to make sure he gets what he wants. And he's going to come back because knowing him, he's not going out like this. Whether feeling good or feeling bad, the training must continue. This being New York City, you never know who may show up to photobomb a video session. Get money. Get money. Get fucking money, baby. Actually, rapper Busta Rhymes turns out to be a big fan of Martinez. Busta is also being trained by Munoz for a comeback of his own, and doesn't hesitate to drop some more love on Martinez before he leaves. It's my biggest inspiration yeah. in bodybuilding. <laughs> love him to death. Hey, Team boss. MHP, Team Pro Edge, can't well, fuck yeah. with the big homie. He gonna <laughs> bust y'all ass at the fucking Olympia uh -oh, this year too. Uh -oh. And I said, fuck out of here. Uh oh, all right, boss. <laughs> Meanwhile, after their nightly training session, Swan Cardo, John, and Pop Stella Rosa end up at one of their favorite eating spots. Located in New Rochelle, New York, Rock Body Fitness Cafe specializes not only in bodybuilder food, but in good, fast, delicious, healthful food for everyone. Mark Ioko, a New York City police captain, and his partner John are passionate about their business. Obviously, it's a problem in America of people eating unhealthy, unclean, um, fried foods. And um, me and John had this idea that we should have a place. There should, there should always be an option to eating healthy food. You should always have that option. And you know, it should be convenient, healthy, quick. And uh, it should also marry up the bodybuilding world with regular people. I was never a bodybuilder, but I always had the passion and, and, the, and the drive that these guys have. And I always try to be like them and copy them. And uh, for me, just as a hobby, summer fun. Uh, I like to get in shape for the summer, and uh, I'm a New York City police officer, so I had to prepare all my foods, put it in Tupperware, just as bodybuilders do. And, you know, people would make fun of me, but that's, that's what gave me the idea initially. In addition to being one of the few places where John and Swan can purchase a meal that fits in with their current eating plan, Rock Body Cafe is also a comfortable neighborhood place to hang out, relax, and strategize. So what show are you doing after the New York Pro? Um, I'm going to do Toronto, and then uh, Chicago, and then go on to Dallas, which is going to be in August. So we might, I mean, depending on how the, the year goes, if I win a show and I win it convincingly, then maybe I'll go on to the Olympia in September. I'm not sure. I think you're ready. I mean, if you win a show, Convincingly, with among good competitors, I think you should give it a shot. It might give them a good learning experience too, doing maybe multiple shows like this. Yeah. To see. Well, that's why I want to do it because it'll give me the opportunity to learn more about how to peak and what works for me, what doesn't. But also, you know, to compete against. I mean, one of those shows is going to be stacked. It's probably going to be the New York Pro, but. 
at least I can really see engage where I belong amongst, you know, a lot of the best guys out there. He belongs on that stage, on the pro stage. Before, you know, it was his pro debut, and and I can I can relate because I'm getting ready for my pro debut now, and I have no idea where I belong on that stage. And it's you know it's always in the back of your head, and it 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 messes with you sometimes. So now he's past that, and and he's a lot more confident. I try to get the worries out of his mind and tell him. You know, you're a pro now, that means you're ready to go up against the pros. But of course, there's veterans that have, you know, they have more muscle, they have more maturity, they, they're known more, their name has been out there more than you. So it takes a while for you to build up on, uh, on your foundation. You know, this is a whole new level. And I think he's finally gaining that confidence where he doesn't have to question who he's up against where now he's at the point where it doesn't matter who shows up, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to take this, you know? Like, if I get into the Olympia on points, I don't, I don't want to do it like that. I want, to, I want to win and get in, you know? But even if I win, I want to do it like, like a convincing win, you know? Like, there was no doubt that I was the winner, you know what I mean? I don't want to embarrass myself, you know, and, and I don't want to do the stages of stuff of this justice by stepping on before I'm even ready. I think he belongs on that stage already, but I don't count. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, he's your Mr. You don't count out there. <laughs> he's your Mr. Olympia already. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't count. <laughs> NYBB Blue is brought to you by MHP, the performance nutrition innovator. Go with MHP, the most trusted supplement brand of amateur and pro bodybuilders around the world. At Dumbbell's Gym in North Bergen, New Jersey, a special surprise is in store for one of the employees. Owners Marianne and Joe Donzi hold a contest of sorts to see which one of their co-workers is making the most gains towards his or her goals. Marianne and Joe are veterans in this industry, but you'll never find them hidden away in a back office. We have been here for 19 years. Um, we started it... Uh, 1994. 1994. Joe and I both have started working out as teenagers. And our clientele mostly consists of everything from young teenagers to 80, 90 year old people. It's, and everything in between from hardcore uh, people who compete to your grandmother. Today, the staff meets for their quarterly goal assessment. Okay, we started this journey together, right? September, we decided that we wanted better health, better fitness, and we decided to, to do this as a group. We like to encourage our staff to be examples to our members. So we have quarterly meetings where we meet to assess their fitness goals and we encourage them and inspire them to set goals, write them down, and we help them on a plan to achieve those goals. Everybody in this group should give yourself a hand because every single person in this room did improve on your health and your fitness and had made improvements since you did three months before. <laughs> Jared, who is my number one, come up here. Give us dumbbell strong. Let's see the back. All right, pretty good. Because this was so good, and we were so impressed, Joe and I, with how he did. His prize this time is a personal training session with Victor Martinez, just for you. <laughs> I started working out when I'm 16 years old, I'm 50. I have whiz, a little bit more wisdom and a little bit more knowledge, but you guys have youth on your side and it's not gonna be long that this kid's gonna blow me away.
At Ferrell CrossFit, Ben White is training with Noah Milstein to perfect his lifting technique. Put your hands in. That's not possible. Okay, put your hands back out. I'll go here. Believing that a new emphasis on flexibility and form will catapult him to the next level, Ben is taking the year off from bodybuilding to, as he likes to say, reboot and rebuild. During a training session with one of his clients, Ben recalls how the high level of competition in the New York bodybuilding scene was brought into sharp focus during a particularly traumatic experience following Kai Green on stage. You seen it, you see what happened to me. I, I'm gonna win the New York Pro, this and that. Didn't even know nothing about Kai. I'm gonna do this and that. Next thing I know, I see the dude in the back with a ponytail. He's in front of me. He is in front of me. And when somebody is in front of you with a ponytail and they skip out like this, and all you hear is the crowd, you're like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta shit, um, ooh, I gotta use the bathroom. Like, oh, can you put me in the back? Like, ooh. And then he goes like this right here and the whole crowd stand up, then you go out and it's like, tweet, tweet. And you hear four or five people clapping like this. Um, overall, New York has the, the stiffest competition. I mean, if you want to sit there and look at it between East Coast and West Coast, it's New York. It's, it, it's always New York. And we got attitude, too. And we, I mean, th that's how it is. But New York shows are like the hardest shows. It, it, they're hard because you got so many bodybuilders concentrated in this one area. It's not like they're spaced out. We can actually get here. We ain't got to take no cab. We, I mean, not cab, but um, plane. We can just drive here two, three hours away. Boston, Pennsylvania, everything is right here. So you can get a flood of people coming in. But with the other states like Florida, Vegas, most people don't even live out there. I mean, if you really look at it, California, yeah, but it's not a whole lot. More bodybuilders, I think, is on the East Coast now than on the West Coast. Where you living? I'm, li I'm in Albany. Um, Evan Sonapani, he's right there in Massachusetts, Boston. Kai Green, Victor Martinez, they're right there in New York. So they're like, Ben, you doing New York? Let me see if any of these dudes doing it because, I mean, that's who I'm going against. I'm the best in this area. <laughs> When I go to the next area, I got to respect Kai, Victor. When I go over there, it's um, Jose Ramos, and then you got um, Kevin English, and you got the rest of them. I mean, these are people that's winning shows and doing it. So whether you 212 or open, you still got to compete against these people. So you pick shows that they ain't in. <laughs> one of the first things you will notice about Ben White is his amiable nature. In fact, it is one of the things that first attracted his Canadian girlfriend, Tara. He's the funniest person I've ever met. Oh, y'all were going, y'all going to like really fuck me today, wasn't you? <laughs> Look how you laughing. <laughs> if I ever have a frown on my face, there's going to be a smile very fast. He has a sense of humor like nobody else. I had never met, and I remember the very first time people had ever asked me, it's like, he talks so much. I was like, but that's what I love. When you come back by August, I will be completed my recovery at the Alcoholic Anonymous just right over <laughs> However, Ben also has a dark side. He is deeply competitive, a part of him I was shortly about to see. The three of us ride to nearby Albany and to Brick Salon, where Ben is somewhat of a local celebrity. But you know, I, I, I know a lot of guys dream about what it must feel like to be as strong as this guy. You know what I mean? Just to have, just to have his strength for a day, it's like, it's like soup being a, a X-Men or something. It's like being Superman, Superman or something. What you, what you gonna do? What are you gonna do when you're like, when you're done bodybuilding? What are you gonna do? Just train people? Or? <laughs> At the old folks' home? You're gonna be like 60, 70 years old stripping in the old folks' home. A trainer. Mm -hmm. Treat the next generation of bodybuilders that's coming up with fitness or whatever. Right. Later, at Albany Strength, one of the most seriously hardcore gyms in the area, Ben sees a few of his lifting buddies with whom he has an ongoing rivalry. We witness some heated words. 
and a challenge. This is my challenge, you not never, you. You're never gonna over I gotta over overlook you. You can. Yes, I can. You're okay. injured now. You're beat up. And that's the best time to jump on somebody. Okay. Because okay. He, he's, a, he's a lion, and you're the one that used to be the king of the pride. I know you still want your mane and everything else, and you got a dog, and like, Rrr. But it's like, meow. You know, like Simba, when he was in the cave, and he said, do that roar, and then all of a sudden you heard him in the back, Rrr. He had to save you. <laughs> this time, this is going to be me and him. It becomes necessary at the upper levels of any sport for professional athletes to undergo bodily maintenance regimens in order to combat the rigors of intense training. The muscles and connective tissues can become stiff, atrophied, and in the case of bodybuilders, lead to a flattened and misshapen look on stage. Rehabilitation specialist Jimmy Bluff has come up with a way to combat this with what he calls the Bluff Technique. And tonight, he squeezes in a quick session with New York pro hopeful Jonathan De La Rosa before taking a plane back home to Utah. The fascia starts to tighten up on them, and that's where it starts almost not allowing it to grow, therefore starting to pull at the attachments. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in, I'm actually releasing that fibrotic tissue, you know, which is about 2,000 pounds of tensile strength covering that muscle. And instead of using knuckles, I pull it apart like scissors. And then I'll get in there with my elbow when I need to and I can release knot after knot after knot. I mean, you can see here how tight this is. You've got like a fire hose piece of that, that spinal erector there, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm gonna literally take this here, that bump right there, and that's what I'm pulling apart. Okay, with my technique, you know, you can't dig knuckles in there Aside from tearing the surface of the skin, you can see the side that I already worked, how much more pliable and soft it is because I've actually lengthened out that tissue. So I literally lean into it and just create enough pressure to bink, kind of release that. And I'm not creating trauma um, and tearing like deep tissue is. I'm creating a lengthening in the muscle. With me, the only time you feel pain is when you have, you know, this crazy amount of pressure right before it releases the area that's in pain. So we've got some trigger points, which actually John has some nerve tissue running through. So when I hit, it's literally shooting through his nerves before it bink, releases, but the release is like, oh, that feels so good. You know, and then I'm actually going probably three times deeper right now in this area than I was five minutes ago because I've already removed what was in pain. As he's working in there, you actually really do feel popping and pulling, and it, it's a uh, it's crazy feeling. When he first when he first came to town to work on Victor, and he, you know, Victor told me about it. You actually hear the popping and feel it inside you. I was like, how could that be possible? But yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's an honor to be able to work with these guys. That's why I'm excited to be out here at the New York to see it on stage. It's like, what the that final product, man. Uh, but it's so much more than that. You got a guy's heart, his soul, his training schedule, his sleep, keeping everyone in his life happy, uh, his girlfriend. I mean, I don't think people really take into account like the massive amount of sacrifices it takes to even get close to John's level. They're like civilian soldiers, man. They have to eat, you know, proteins, carbs, fats, right down to the gram most of the time. Everything. It's just what it takes. It's not a matter of if it has to happen. No, it has to happen. You can't help but wonder, like, if this all plays a part, you know. I've really taken um, extra care of my body this year, and hopefully it shows on May 25th. So what I'm going to do is focus. When we're done here, on pulling out more of these lines. I flex a little harder, and I want to accentuate these right here. You see that? that how deep that is, what I want to do is get in there, I'm going to pull these three muscles apart, more or less, peel them apart, I'm going to get in and dice up each muscle in general and release the adhesions inside it. So we might notice, hopefully when we're done here, um, in the next five minutes, um, more striations, vascularity, and it'll be bigger. Awesome. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, awesome. 
spring and summer is bodybuilding's main competitive season. Although John De La Rosa is still preparing for his first show of the year, others have already begun competing. Marco and Yasira have just returned from Pittsburgh, where Yasira won the overall in the bikini division at the IFBB Pittsburgh Pro, which now qualifies her to compete in the Olympia later this year. A few weeks before, Marco flew to Orlando for the IFBB Show of Champions, where he placed third. They return home and with little or no rest, get right back to training. The New York Pro is fast approaching. There is a mutual understanding when both partners in a relationship are bodybuilders. Each can sympathize with the other's pain when things really get tough, like at a competition. But as good as a relationship between two competitors can be, there are many factors when in contest mode that can layer on extra stress. Not all couples can handle it, as well as Marco and Yasira, but even for them there are moments where the pressure can get to be too much. The show that Marco just did, he got third. He got third place at the um, Europa Orlando, yeah. and he was he wasn't really happy with his physique. I thought he looked great, but he was like, you know, no, um, I could have been better. You know, I, I could have, you know. The convention center down there in Orlando is huge. I mean, it's my responsibility to come in shape. I don't put it on nobody else, but I definitely can can admit to having overexerted myself a little bit from Friday morning to pre-judging, way too much walking, way too much. So much walking that I actually got back to New York and considered buying an electric scooter for about 300 bucks, I swear to God. Do you know the man forgot his trunks? I'm sitting down, waiting for him to go on stage. He comes up to me and tells me, I need my trunks. I'm like, I don't have your trunks. You didn't give me your trunks. I gave you, I gave you my trunks. He took it in the back. I'm like, I did not take no trunks. I went, I had to walk all the way to that parking lot to go check if they were in the trunk. There was nothing in the trunk. It's just like, I feel like just strangling you, he told me. I'm like, what the hell did I do? I'm like, I didn't, I didn't take your trunks. I'm like, you're competing. You need to be responsible for your trunks, your number, your past, everything. I don't need to be responsible for that. I take care of my own stuff. Then, after the show is done and everything, you know, he's still like, ah, you lost my trunks. <laughs> there was no trunks. Guess where they were at? Right on top of the bed, in the room. I was like, this man is going to drive me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so then did he apologize? Uh, he didn't apologize. He didn't apologize. He didn't say nothing. We just went to eat after. That's it. <laughs> The challenge for a bodybuilder like Marco, who is competing several times this year, is to be able to maintain both his size and definition throughout the season, while also timing the peaks in his physique to coincide perfectly with each contest. It's difficult, but not impossible. Spacing the shows out is important, taking into consideration one's other obligations, of course. It's a matter of experience, learned through trial and error. We got a pretty, uh, we got a pretty stacked lineup coming into the show for the New York Pro. A lot of aesthetics, a lot of aesthetics. It's not just mass monsters, it's just guys that are just aesthetically put together. So every little piece is gonna count from that side tricep to the hamstrings, to the calves. Every little, every little detail is gonna count coming into this next show. That's what's gonna separate everybody else because everybody's gonna look great. The judges are gonna have a hard time picking us apart if, assuming everybody comes in full condition, it's gonna be based on the rear delts, the calves, hamstring separation, glute separation. So those are the things we wanna concentrate on going in the next couple weeks. Fireworks come May 25th. Now you're gonna have that home field advantage in the New York Pro, so you're gonna fucking roll out of bed. Dude, that is my you biggest advantage. Fucking, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming in like I'm the shit. Exactly. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm at home, man. When I'm at home, I've, I, I mean, it it's not to say that, I, again, it's still my responsibility as an athlete to come in shape wherever it is that I go. It's just, I, I need some more practice doing that. Of course. It's not you easy. Make every time like, home. you know, you got these guys in Europe, Brazil, uh, Germany, uh, uh, fucking all over the place. And then they come back and they still win the Olympia. Yep. You know? So it's just a matter of finding that practice and, and getting that network where you can have everything pre-planned and... and networking is the key, knowing people. 
you know, get, making it feel like home, getting a suite with a kitchen maybe instead it, of a regular room. It won't happen again. I promise you. Even if I got to get me that electric scooter, we are not going to walk, man. I swear to God. You gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the first one to start that off, running around in a little electric scooter or something. I'm not walking nowhere. For years, thousands of athletes from all over the world have turned to MHP to improve their performance and build their bodies. And now, MHP is bringing you our latest supplement innovation, Myo X. Myo X is unlike anything the industry has seen and introduces a new category of muscle building and performance enhancement, a myostatin inhibitor. Myostatin, which occurs naturally in the body, limits muscle growth. Documented cases of genetic myostatin deficiencies in the Belgian Blue Bull are an extreme example of the muscle building effects of having reduced myostatin. Myo X has been shown in clinical tests to lower the levels of myostatin, opening a door to muscle growth that has never before been possible. Discover the secret that is helping some of the best athletes in the world make gains in strength and size like never before. Bigger than nature intended. Myo X. The Dumbbells Gym prize of a training session with Victor Martinez is turning out to be a lot more difficult than young Jared thought it would be. Get that stretch, chest up, chest up on the way forward, chest up. It's gonna give me a drop on this one. There you go. Get back, on the way back, arch on your back. Good. Oh uh. man. My mind is blown, you know, like, I would think I'd push myself and push myself, but I really never experienced something like this where I'm struggling with lightweight. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. We got two more, two more. Yeah, one more. Good. It's definitely a different experience where little techniques I would have never thought to use, it completely just changed my aspect of lifting. So you want to get that positive, show on the negative, feel your lats coming out. Same thing goes down. You want to get that full fringe of motion, right? Full extension, man. You want your lats out. It's the only way you're going to build your lats. Right there, all right? Try to keep the plate straight up. Yeah, two. When I started getting into bodybuilding, I always looked towards uh, Dennis Wolf because he was one of the taller guys. Uh, but the intensity Victor brings, I watch his videos all the time on YouTube. Uh, the way he trains, his attitude, what he's been through. Um, he never gives up. He always does it with a smile on his face, you know? And to have him here, to have him as a friend of Dumbbells, uh, it's a wonderful thing. I'm the envy of a lot of people, you know? And I say that humbly, you know? Not just cause, hey, I worked out with the Martinez, it's hey, I took what he gave me and it's an experience. He basically brought down that next level to me. So I'm gonna try to take it so I can further my, uh, my experience in bodybuilding. Crazy. Whew. Four, come on. Seven, four, last one, come on. Six, seven, eight, nine, come on, ten, let's go, five, five, four, three, two, one, good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good time, bro. In its 19 years, Dumbbells has had its share of bodybuilding greats train in the gym and grace its walls, including Victor, of course. But Martinez is about to get a special surprise from gym owners Marianne and Joe. So Victor, you're such a good friend to us in our heart, and you mean a lot to Joe, to me. Thank and you. So I told you that we have a surprise for you. Whoa. So let's go check yes. that out. Whoa. What are you talking about? Oh, man. Oh. Unveiling today for you. Oh, man. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Joe, yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. I love it. This is the artist who did this it. This is the artist he who did, did it. This is just man. a sketch I gave them, but uh, it's for you now. Thank you, bro. Yeah. 
Oh, thank you. Bro. You got it, man. Oh, I want to get your approval. Yeah, man. no, man. It's, man. it's great, man. It's great, <laughs> man. I've drawn for a long time, man. It's just definitely got the right lines and everything. Oh, it's, right. uh, yeah, and the shadows, man, angles, man. It's great, man. Very cool. Yeah. No, no I'm glad you like it. Yeah, oh. your approval is definitely uh, the one I was looking for. Wow. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're thank so you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Oh, God. Beautiful. In New Rochelle, John De La Rosa is busy making a dream come true. After many months and years of planning, he is finally getting the chance to open his own supplement store. Coincidentally and conveniently located across the street from the Rockbody Cafe, the little storefront that will eventually be known as the Nutrition Locker is slowly taking shape. This year has been a pivotal one for De La Rosa. Finally getting his sea legs as a pro competitor, John is now determined to break out of the quiet nice guy image that has sometimes kept him in the background and begin to show the world the more confident professional bodybuilder and now business owner that he is becoming. I, I went through like a big uh, change this past year. I mean, I always hear from everybody like, oh, you're such a nice guy, you're humble. And I love that. And I don't want to be anything different. But I feel like you have to be in this sport more accessible, you have to be more real, I have to be able to show who I really am. I want, I want people to see who John is, you know. I hate to even call them fans, but it's like, you know, I, I want my fans to see what's going on in my life, how I'm doing with my business, how my relationship is going. John has become an avid video blogger, spontaneously recording his thoughts and feelings as they come to him and posting them warts and all for everyone to see. Um, as you can hear from my voice, a little sick, it happens. Still not stopping me from getting ready. While this is not uncommon in the fitness industry, for John, a naturally shy person, it was a big and somewhat difficult step. Well, the change that has happened for me in the past year is believing in myself. You know, none of this would be possible without believing that I could do it. Three years ago when I wanted to do it, I never lost sight of doing this. You know, I always knew that when I had the opportunity and if things were right, the right time in my life, I was going to do it. You know, it's scary as shit, <laughs> you know, because you're dumping a lot of money into an investment and you don't know how it's going to work out. But I knew I was going to do it. Getting the nutrition locker up and running has been a full time job for John and Swan lately. They often eat here while setting things up and sometimes must fit in that all-important cardio on an elliptical machine in the back storage room. It's a sacrifice for their future they are both happy to make. And for John, it seems to even be somewhat of a welcome distraction from recent events he prefers not to think too much about. So how's, um, how's John doing with um, his mom and dad? And Are they coming to the show? Yeah, the rules coming. They've, they've, been, they've been good. I mean, they're working. They're taking their time to work things out. But I think they're both willing to, you know, make an effort. Oh, because I know he, you know, sometimes it's difficult, you know, because he's always, like, so concerned and stuff. About others and everything. But I think, I mean, this year, I think he's changed. Like, he's changed a lot. And he's, you know, he knows what his job is, where he stands, what, you know, he has the power to do and not do, and he just, you know, and he knows that life is not all perfect, but, you know, it's just, he's good. You know, it's, it's hard to watch because it's your family, it's something you're going through, and, um, you know, as much as I want to say, I don't think about it, I try not to think about it, it's there, you know, and, uh, you know, seeing it on, you know, seeing it on camera and, yeah, my dad, uh, sorry. <laughs> my dad's a, he's a strong man, you know, and uh, I know he's going through a lot. You know, I respect my father so much, and I love my mother so much. I love them both, you know, and it sucks to, to see them going through what they're going through, but it, it's amazing to me that, like, no matter what, we still get together every Monday night for dinner. You know, they know what I'm going through. They know the investment that I've made here. They know that I'm going through my prep. And they always, both of them, 
just remind me, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, you're, you're a great kid. And, you know, even in the face of almost getting divorced, you see the strength in my father, you know what I mean? It's so easy to just say, oh, she was a bitch. And, but he doesn't. You know, instead he says, you know, he's dedicated her, her life to her kids more than I have. <laughs> to think he said that about my mom, and, I, and it's, it's probably true, but like he's dedicated his whole life to us too, you know? So, I don't know. It's, uh, like I said, it's, you see the strength in my father, and or I do, you know? Like I said, it's easy to just be angry and be upset and, you know, um, just turn your back to, to everything that's good in your life and forget about, you know, all the good things that have happened and just be negative. And instead, he, he chooses to smile in front of the camera and still laugh and be, you know, lighthearted. And, you know, it's like I said, it's just hard to watch because it's your life, you know, and you don't want your family to be going through something like that. A friendly lifting challenge between Ben White and a fellow bodybuilder has erupted into a war of words as one of the regulars at Albany Strength, insulted at being left out, demands to be included. The thing about it is the competition was between two bodybuilders. And then you want to put your two cents in it because we all know people that can't become bodybuilders do powerlifting because their lower half don't match their upper half. Everybody has the king of the house. Before I left, I was the man. So now he came, so he's a newcomer and everything else. He's built his reputation, so like you said, hard work and everything else. And he is the person to beat. And if I ain't mistaken, if I'm the reigning champion and I step down, I still have the right to challenge whoever's there. So their little manes and feathers get a little fluffed up. I didn't come here and say that I'm going to outdo everybody. I challenged you, your, I challenged your I, training partner, you and then you jumped in. It doesn't matter. You challenge people here in this gym. Did you come here when you don't even fucking train here? Did you gonna come here and I'm I don't want to train here? Whether I train, here. whether I train, oh, yeah, whether, yeah. whether I train here one day Listen, or once a month, I still train here. It doesn't matter. You come here and tell everybody how much strong you're gonna be. We busting ourselves, and you know this gym. What, but, but, but why y'all, why y'all busting? You're, you're, you're doing you it only. Be. You're only doing it for each other. Now the competition yeah, came here. Y'all, fe y'all feathers are ruffled. But this, you gotta understand. Your one feathers thing. are you ruffled. Gotta, no, stop talking shit. You gotta understand one thing. You are proud of your of your bodybuilding, correct? You are pro. Nothing taken away from you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amateur, hard work, hard work. We are amateur lifters here. We take a proud of this. Every day we're busting our balls. That's what we When live you for. come this here is, and right you now, tell yeah, we live for that you're going to come and beat us, would you think I'm going to stay in the back and say, no, you're going to come in once a year and going to beat me? Yeah, I'm going to no. beat you. And see, and that's the problem. Rock was missing for but 10 years. There you go. And that's the thing. I'm not going to let you talk and I'm not going to let you beat me. As a matter of fact, you know what? You will be there on stage, loading my weight. Yeah, we, we can be like, John, I got this. How, much, how many places is it? And I, I high five you when I get ready to do it. Whatever happens. So you consider yourself as a strong guy? No, I actually just consider myself strong at what I want to do. And I don't like to squat, but since I need my hamstrings and glutes, I did four or five today. It felt actually light. I told him, he said, like, stay there. We need to work on your technique. And then as I go lower and lower, yeah, I like the pain. I like the stretch. Like I like the rubber band. Yeah, you I do. Like no. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. I like it. I know you don't. Yeah, I like it. Whenever you're ready, you know. Oh, August. But it's not about you. It's not. It's always. Ladies and gentlemen, if I if he beat me in the deadlift, I quit bodybuilding. I won't. I, I won't even do nothing else. I shake on it. In August, I shake on it. You heard it? I don't know. I, if he beat me, he never going on the bodybuilding show me, ever again. I will never do a bodybuilding show again. Then you quit now. What happened? Oh! Because you're never going to beat me. Because all I got to do, baby, is lift weights and train. That's it. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping this one. Because I know that when you sleep, you get bigger. Either you're going to lift it or you ain't going to lift it at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter what nobody say, but it always, it always chuckle, giggle on your way back home. Ah, you got really pissed. But at the end of the day, I sat there and told him. I said, anybody's free to open and say whatever they want. And then the guy with the smallest head and the smallest legs in the gym, I got something to say. We're going to be there. Yeah, you can be cheering them on.
Becoming a pro bodybuilder in New York may be the achievement of a lifelong dream for some, but the reality of this situation is that it puts you at the bottom of a pile of some of the best bodybuilders in the world. As hard as one might work to become pro, the harsh truth is that's when the real work begins. Relatively new pros like John, Swan, Yasira, and Marco are learning this lesson every day. Victor Martinez has been slugging it out in the pros since 2000 and has no illusions about the importance of the New York pro for his career next month. Though many who follow the sport consider his win in New York a lock, one can't ignore the lingering effects of his injury and the delay of the start of his prep until January. As anyone who has competed before knows, anything can happen at a bodybuilding competition. And in fact, there are whispers on the forums of a monstrous young Egyptian who goes by the nickname Big Raimi, who it is rumored is considering entering the show.